Hey everybody, here's our Mitsubishi WD-57734 rear projection DLP TV. I'm going to be replacing the lamp in this TV today. The previous lamp went out giving the infamous red LED over the lamp indicator. So basically when you try to turn the TV on you're going to hear it try to ignite the lamp which, which is like three clicks or so. And you'll try a few times and then it'll shut itself off and you'll get the red lamp indicator. This simply means that the lamp has burned out and you have to replace it. So basically for the past couple of days I've been using this old um, boat anchor fuzzy TV and I don't mean fuzzy like a cat, I mean the picture on it's fuzzy when you compare it to something like that. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Here is the replacement lamp. Got it from Amazon. Now I'm gonna talk about actually um, I'm gonna actually talk about these lamps when after I do this and install. There's a big difference between the genuine lamps and the and the um, generic ones, which I'll get to shortly. So basically we're gonna start by doing this. I'm packing the lamp from this cardboard. And of course, be careful with the lamp as it is fragile. I'm going to set that to the side. It also comes with some thumb screws. So basically, we're going to have to turn this TV around. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove this lamp cartridge access panel. It takes two Phillips head screws. And it appears that this TV had a generic lamp installed. It's made in China. It only lasts about two years, which I'll cover that at the end of the video. Now I'm going to need a um, flathead screwdriver to get those screws out. Now the lamp I got has thumb screws, so that should make it a little easier. Yours may be different. Go ahead and unscrew these two screws. I don't know if you can see them or not. I think you can see one. Basically there's a screw here and a screw there. Those have to come out. And then the whole unit should slide right out. Okay, now we've finally got those cheap flat end screws out of there. Let's go ahead and pull out this cartridge. Should just pull right out. Real easy. Here's a look at the old lamp. Now I've noticed that this lamp here has a screen over here. The new one doesn't have that for some reason. And while you had this thing open, it's a good time to have a look at your fans. Which those have a little bit of dust, but if it's really dirty in there, you might want to clean that out. Which I personally recommend doing that when the lamp is installed because Without this lamp installed, you risk getting a lot of dust on the optics of your TV, and that's not a good thing. So, I would honestly prefer to do the cleaning when the lamp is actually installed. So that way, again, you don't get dust all over the optics. And of course, this lamp here is not a Phillips. It is one of the cheaper ones. See, it's missing the screen for some reason. Not sure why. 
but it is what it is. We'll go ahead and install it. It's going to be a good time to get the thumb screws that they included so we can use those. These are a lot better than flathead or Phillips head, I believe. You know, to be honest, they have flatheads on the end, but they're thumb screws. That's a lot better. Makes it makes installing and uninstalling a lot easier. Now I noticed that this lamp is made in Mexico. The old one was made in China, so hopefully maybe this one here will last a bit longer. Anyways, let's go ahead and install it. It's pretty much the reverse of uninstalling the previous one. to grab my flashlight because light wise this isn't cutting it okay everybody here's a quick little tip to keep in mind before you go to install your new lamp go ahead and install the included thumb screws these screws have threads on the end but there's a gap between the threads and the heads of the screw that way the screws can actually be um, attached to the lamp assembly, the lamp cartridge assembly, for easier installation. Basically this way you can install the, the lamp with the screws in and just simply thread the screws in that way. But in my, in my case what I did was I put the lamp assembly in first and then tried to thread the screws in. It was significantly more difficult and took a bit longer to do. So anyways, just my two cents after watching this video you know after doing this whole procedure go ahead and take those screws out little included bag and thread those in to the lamp assembly then install the lamp assembly okay see what I'm doing Now it's in. Just had to line that plug up properly. And it is all the way in on this side, so we'll go ahead and install the thumb screws. Now stick this light back over here so you can have some light. Camera can adjust better than my eyes can in this kind of lighting. Now I'll go ahead and turn the TV back around and see if it starts. Okay, now I'm going to plug the TV in and start it up. See if we get anything. See, the TV is unplugged and forgot all its settings. So I gotta go back in and put those in. And as you see, TV is working just fine again. Perhaps I believe it started up a lot quicker this time too. There's the Windows Media Center guide. And if you don't know what Windows Media Center is, I have a video on that. You can use Windows Media Center and a seating device to replace your cable set top box and save money on your cable bill. Anyways, this lamp here was a generic replacement, one of the cheap RAM ones. It was twenty something dollars, I think twenty five or thirty dollars off of Amazon.com. And the reason why I got that was because I needed it here in a hurry and it was a seller that offered Prime um, shipping, which I have a Prime account. 
But basically you have two kinds of lamps you can buy for your TV. You have these generic ones and you have the genuine replacements. And usually they're manufactured by a company called Philips. I'm sure many of you have probably heard of that brand. They make TVs themselves. But um, these generic ones, these generic lamps tend to have a lot less of a lifespan than the genuine lamps. Usually, um, I believe the genuine lamps, depending on how often you use your TV every day, should last you around three to four years. This lamp lasted an estimated two years of regular runtime. The TV was bought at a yard sale back in um, June 2012, and the previous owner mentioned they had just replaced a lamp not long before selling the TV. So basically, that lamp lasted around two years, and the estimated lifespan of that lamp and the generic lamp I put in is about 6,000 hours. That already this new lamp seems to be performing a lot better than the one it replaced. As you can see, the TV started a lot faster when I actually pressed the power button. But anyways, um, in terms of cost, as I mentioned, the, gen the uh, generic ones run between 20 to 40 bucks, and I recommend you actually buy any lamp with the housing. Don't just buy the lamp bulb itself because when you buy the bulb itself, you risk um, breaking the lamp itself or getting fingerprints and stuff all over the front of the lamp. So it's always best to buy the housing so that way you can just install the housing and be done with it. Now those the genuine Philips lamps are a bit more expensive but when it comes to TV lamps you get what you pay for. If you buy a Philips lamp it should run just like the original lamp in the TV did. So anyways if you have a um, rear projection high def TV that just suddenly stops working like this and you get no picture at all and you get a red light under a lamp just replace the lamp don't throw the TV in the trash don't donate it to a thrift store just replace your lamp and be done so anyways this concludes how to replace a lamp in a DLP TV such as the WD-57734 and the question or comments feel free to ask some thanks for watching